بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله The Angel Michael or Mikael is one of the greatest angels to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alongside Gabriel and is highly admired in the Abrahamic religions according to the biblical narrative the angel Michael is considered the chief of God's angels and is often depicted in a warrior-esque fashion. Iconography, statues, and paintings usually show him wearing armor, wielding a sword, looking ready to fight. This is largely due to the passages and verses of the Bible particularly the chapter Revelations that describe the angel Michael leading a battalion of angels in a heavenly war against Satan and his demons. Mikael, like Jibrail, traces his name back to Syriac and Hebrew origins. And in Hebrew, his name Mikael is Mikael. And if we dissect that word or that three syllable name, we have Mi, Kha, and El. Who is there like God? And it's like the Arabic Menkalla. The Kha is the Arabic Kel. The me is men, who is there like, and then the el is the derivative of Elohim or God in Hebrew, divinity from that divine source. So his very name is a manifestation of that thought-provoking yet beautiful question. Who is there like Allah? Who can be like God? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, again, like Jibra'il, the name Mikael is not found in the Holy Qur'an, rather in the world of Ahadith and Islamic literature. In the Holy Qur'an, he is directly referenced one time. In chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, the cow, verse number 98. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًّا لِلَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَجِبْرِيلَ وَمِيْكَالَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَدُوٌّ لِلْكَافِرِينَ Whoever is an enemy to God, his messengers, his angels, Gabriel and Michael, then God is an enemy with him. The reason behind why this verse was revealed and brought down was because when the Holy Prophet of Islam entered the city of Medina, the Medinian and Fadaki Jews approached him with questions and inquiries regarding his prophethood. The very presence of Jews in the Arabian Peninsula during the 7th century is because of their await for the last and final prophet. Otherwise, what would bring the Jewish community to the middle of the desert? The scripture, according to that denomination of Jews, taught them that eventually the final messenger of God will emerge in this location. And after hearing of a prophet claimant, they approached the Holy Prophet of Islam. A man by the name of Abdullah ibn Surya. He was a high priest from Fadak. You can describe him like a rabbi. Came to the Holy Prophet and wanted to confirm whether his prophethood was serious. Whether he was seriously a prophet of God or not, as he claims to be. And he began to ask him a series of questions. That would then determine whether or not he was a genuine prophet of God. And only prophets would be able to properly respond with the correct answers. 
One of the questions was, Describe to us the nature and the way you sleep, O Muhammad. For we have in our scriptures the manner in which the previous prophets of God would sleep. What is your way of sleeping? To which the Holy Prophet of Islam replied, My eye sleeps, but my heart stays awake in remembrance of the Lord. This was a tick in the box that the Holy Prophet answered correctly. They then asked the Holy Prophet of Islam, Now tell us, which angel comes down to you? We understand that the previous prophets of God received their personal angels. Abdullah ibn Surya asked the Prophet, Who is your personal angel? To which the Holy Prophet of Islam said, It is none other than Jibra'il, Gabriel. Abdullah ibn Surya replied, had it been any other angel, especially Michael, we would have believed in you and followed your message. But because it's Gabriel, we're not going to accept. For Gabriel, in our theology, is our enemy. We despise Gabriel. According to that denomination of Jews, they had multiple articles of faith that today's community of Jews don't necessarily accept. One of them is Uzair being the son of God. History confirms that the Medinian Jewish community actually believed that this individual Uzair was the son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another article of faith is that Gabriel is the enemy to the Jewish community, to that particular Jewish community denomination in the 7th century Arabian Peninsula because Gabriel is symbolized with the element fire while Michael is represented with water and mercy and sustenance while Gabriel represents destruction he goes to destroy the people of Lut for example and other nations and so this individual this high priest from FedEx said to the Prophet of Islam, had it been any other angel, we would have followed you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the only verse that directly uses the name Michael. مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًّا لِلَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَرُسُلَهِ وَجِبْرِيلَ وَمِيكَالَ Whoever is an enemy to God, his angels, his messengers, Gabriel and Michael, to Allah it doesn't matter. Gabriel, if you despise him, and Michael... You highly venerate him. To me, if you're an enemy to any of these angels, then I am in enmity with you. The angel Michael plays a significant role in Islamic theology. Aside from only the Holy Prophet of Islam, the Holy Prophet's family make reference to this glorious angel of God. In As-Sahif as the compendium of supplications by the great-grandson of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, Ali, son of Hussein, Zain al-Abideen, alayhi salati wassalam, has a supplication dedicated to the angels of Allah. In it, when he describes the angels by name, he then follows it with a description that shows their proximity in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with him. When he reaches the angel Michael, Mikail, he says, وَمِكَائِلُ ذُو الْجَاهِ عِنْدَكْ وَالْمَكَانِ الرَّفِيعِ مِنْ طَاعَتِكْ And Michael, the one with the high status and the high level in your obedience. Highlighting to us how close this angel is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, if we look back into the stories of the prophets of God, we see Mikael directly involved, not just semi-involved or indirectly involved with the lives and the mission of the prophets of Allah, directly involved. The three visitors that come to Prophet Abraham, those were the angels. One of them was Israfil, the other was Jibrail, and the third was Michael. And Mikael is often paired with the angel Gabriel during the creation of Adam. 
they were the first to bow down and prostrate to Adam as their qibla when God ordered all the angels to prostrate to Adam they were the first two to do so they were present in the creation of Adam and so forth the angel Mikael in addition to all of this serves a fundamental role in the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he may assume that warrior-esque status in Christendom and perhaps he maintains that in Islam which he does as we find the traditions highlighting both unanimously accepted by Sunnis and Shias whether in Nahjul Balagha or in Musnad Ahmed bin Hanbal or Al Mustadrak al Sahihain, the following tradition. One day, Imam Hassan, the son of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, announced after Imam Ali was martyred, he says, O oh man and womankind, know that we have lost a man whenever he would defend Islam, whenever he would go to the battlefield and fight for the sake of God. Gabriel would be to his right and Michael would be to his left. He does maintain that defender image from an Islamic perspective, but he fulfills a fundamental role. The Holy Prophet of Islam has a tradition that highlights the responsibilities of the angel Mikael. The first is when the Holy Prophet states, وَأَمَّا مِكَائِلُ فَصَاحِبَ كُلَّ قَطْرَةٍ تَسْقُطُ وَكُلَّ وَرَقَةٍ تَنْبُتُ وَكُلَّ وَرَقَةٍ تَسْقُطُ As for Michael and his responsibilities, the hadith is lengthy. The Prophet describes the roles of the angels of God. There are those angels that have the responsibility of conveying the decree of Allah, like Gabriel. There are those angels that have the responsibility of taking the souls from the creation of Allah, like the angel of death, Israel. Then as for Michael, the Holy Prophet states, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he supervises every single drop that falls. So water, every single drop falls, Michael is the one who supervises that. In addition to that, Every single leaf that sprouts, كُلَّ وَرَقَةٍ تَنْبُتْ Every single leaf that sprouts from the earth, Michael, the angel Mikael, is the one who supervises that. And every single leaf that falls and flies away and eventually withers and goes away, the angel Michael supervises that. He is in charge of the system of God that relates to the cosmos, the weather, and so forth. Which is why, in some traditions, when the Prophet Abraham was being launched and catapulted into the flames and fire of Nimrud, the traditions state that the angel Michael was present and was very afraid for the well-being of Prophet Abraham because he knew he just needs to await the order of Allah to make it rain then the fire will turn off and extinguish but Allah is not ordering him and it looks like it's going to be too late the man is literally being thrown into the, through the, from the air and is about to land into the fire and Allah hasn't ordered me to make it rain yet and so the tradition indicates that Mikael was thinking, he was very worried and concerned. How come God did not order me to have it rain yet? Until he sees Prophet Abraham land in the flame, and to his surprise and shock, perfectly fine, and in the best of circumstances, as the Quran said, the flame became bardan wa salama, became cool and a place of ease. And the tradition tells us the thought process of Michael and that he would think, glory be to Allah, I thought I was his only hope. This is a reminder that if Allah wants to protect you, nothing can end you. And at the end of the day, ultimately, Allah is the only hope for all of us, even the angels. 
Glory be to Allah. And who can be like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his namesake goes? Who is there like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Many might ask, what is the need for an angel being dispatched to supervise the weather, the rain? Can't Allah just do that? Definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do all of this. But Allah wanted to have a system designed such that we are better able to understand our Lord in a more personal way. When we understand that there are angels responsible for everything in life and these angels, they are subservient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine that Mikail is responsible and supervises every single drop. There is not a drop that falls except that Michael is the one in charge of that drop, allowing it to move and fall and go. We can barely handle responsibilities in front of us in the multitudes of like five maxim maximum. There are people who are really good at multitasking. Now imagine every single drop, so every drop of rain from the sea, a river, waterfalls and not just that every leaf that sprouts every leaf that falls he is the one that supervises this this shows us that if he is so epic in that manner then what about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at the all-encompassing power of the angels now imagine they are nothing compared to allah they are nothing compared to the human being as we have understood from an Theological perspective, the insan is closer to Allah. Okay, if that's how the angel is, then what about the glory of our Lord? Therefore, Allah doesn't need to have these angels do all these things, but it's set there out of His mercy for us to better understand the power, the might, the glory, the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mikail, in one tradition, According to the book Medina al Ma'ajiz of As Sayyid Hashim al Bahrani, Umm Ayman, one of the companions of the Holy Prophet of Islam, this upright lady and a companion of Lady Zahra, السلام, approaches the house of, his, of Lady Zahra and she wants to assist her and help her with her errands and some of her responsibilities. The door was locked. And so she looked inside the home just to see if everything was, was fine and everything was good. And then she witnessed the following. She sees Lady Zahra asleep. And it's a very hot, sunny summer day, the tradition details. And she sees Lady Zahra tired and asleep. But she sees the wheat grinder turning, but no hand turning it. And she hears the tasbihat, the glorifying of Allah, but no lips glorifying. And she sees the cradle of her baby son, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, rocking, but no hand rocking it. Shocked and confused, Umm Ayman runs to the Holy Prophet of Islam, asking him about what she had witnessed. The Prophet said, Listen, Umm Ayman, Lady Zahra has been working tirelessly for her family and Allah has now blessed her with some rest. But that doesn't mean her commitments are not fulfilled. Allah has dispatched three angels to fulfill her responsibilities. As for the wheat grinder you saw, that was Gabriel filling that role for her. And as for the tasbihat you heard, the glorifying, the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that was Israfil, sent to glorify while she rests on her behalf. And as for the cradle that was rocking, that was the angel Michael, Mikail, rocking the cradle of my grandson Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Mikail plays a pivotal role in the life, the lives of not just the Holy Prophet of Islam, 
but also his family. Imam al Hassan says after the martyrdom of his father Amir al-Mu'mineen that we have lost a man who Gabriel is on his right and Michael is on his left. They are always involved in the affairs of not just the raindrops or the leaves or every element in the cosmos but also directly involved in the lives of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt the Holy Prophet and his blessed progeny. For if the angels are involved in our lives, then what about the lives of God's closest creations, Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad? Therefore, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us his satisfaction primarily. In addition, the satisfaction of his awliya, his servants, his closest creation, especially the angels of Allah, with a particular emphasis with that close angel, that angel that was loved by the Prophet and his family, and who loved the Prophet and his family, the angel Michael Mikail alayhi salam. Wassalamu alaykum jami'an wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.